parliamentarians have bottled it. She needs to make it crystal clear. Unless we get some progress in the next couple of weeks, we're off. What's what? your exit deal with the EU? I wouldn't pay the EU anything. What? We don't. So we're in the House of Lords, of which you are a noble member, admitted in its own report that actually we have no legal obligation to pay a single penny. We came up with the expression, no deal is better than a bad deal. The reality is, WTO is a different type of deal. It's not no deal at all. It's how most other nations around the world operate. There's a huge opportunity if we leave without the terrible deal. We can take back control faster, sooner, and we can give much more certainty to business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Richard Tice. Hello, Brexiteers! It's fantastic to be here in Newton Abbot. Can you all hear me at the back? Excellent. I can't hear you loud enough. We need a bit of audience participation. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! Excellent. I'm not going to let you fall asleep. You're all standing, but we're going to do a bit more of that later on. So some of you may know, I'm Richard Tice. I've got a day job. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been involved in businesses, small, medium, and large building thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of construction jobs, bringing hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into our economy. And rightly or wrongly, I had been a member of the Conservative Party for many years. I know, we all make mistakes, including me. And I was very happy a couple of weeks ago to send an email to their central office, resigning my membership. Because, because that was the moment I accepted the invitation to be the chairman of the new Brexit party. And my word, we've done a lot in the last few weeks. We only pressed the button to launch this party about five weeks ago. And hopefully, if the technology works, you can see on the video, our launch video, we have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. As always, Nigel is so right. We can do so much better. Our great country deserves to do so much better. And that's why we're saying enough is enough. We cannot stand for this shambles any longer that they call government, that they call leadership. We have been totally and utterly humiliated. Where our Prime Minister has had to write not one, but two begging letters to bureaucrats in Brussels and overseas leaders asking us 
how we should behave. It's utterly outrageous. Incompetent leadership, incapable negotiating teams, and MPs doing dodgy, dirty, backroom deals with each other, totally in contravention of what they promised us. They promised us in their manifestos. It's not acceptable. We don't accept it. 17.4 million people don't want it. These MPs, many of them, they think it's acceptable to sell our country down the river in the worst, with the worst possible deal ever negotiated in history. And our civil service, supposedly the envy of the world, have turned out to be simply not up to the job and not to be trusted. And we know not only is enough enough, but we really can, ladies and gentlemen. We can do so much better, and that's what the Brexit Party stands for. We are here, as our slogan says, to change politics for good. And in just a couple of weeks, we've had seven, over 70,000 people sign up as registered supporters. How many of you here are registered supporters? Hands up. I can see some people with their hands down. That's not good enough. When you go home tonight, sign up, pay your 25 quid, join the party. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, that we brought back a good old-fashioned thing called common sense politics, led by competent, capable leaders. It's time to take on the establishment. It's time to take on the vested interests. It's time to reform the civil service, because we know that we can do so much better. And it was just truly humbling. We had over 1,300 applications to be, to be MEP candidates and some amazing CVs. And here in the South West, we'll be hearing from our candidates later on, all of whom are specialists, leaders in their particular field. And it's truly, truly humbling to have seen that quality apply because it's, it's tough, you know. When you go into politics, you put your head above the parapet you know, it comes with a price and they should all be thanked and respected because it really is, you know, it's a tough gig uh, when you do that. We've got such an opportunity. There's no question. There's a, we've got a real feeling. There's a movement going on here, ladies and gentlemen. It's something different. It's something new. It really feels alive. And that's because those of us who believe in Britain, do we all believe in Britain? Yeah just not loud enough. Do we believe in Britain? Yeah! That's better. Too many people are falling asleep in the cold. Um, we all know that we can do so much better, but we have to make sure that we all vote in these elections. Your friends need to vote. They're friends. You've got to spread the word. Never before has the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, been greater for change. And never before has the appetite been stronger for change. We need to restore trust in democracy, the most basic foundation of our country, democracy. And it's being destroyed by the failed two-party system in Westminster. So we've got to restore trust in democracy. We need to send a very clear message to those MPs in Westminster. We meant it the first time. Leave means leave. What does it mean? What does it mean? Save. That's better. Right. So we've got to send that clear message. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that great, proper, determined, confident leadership can ensure that this country is run and managed and governed so much better. Because we believe in Britain. And we've got some great candidates here today, the first of whom is a former Royal Marine. He did three tours in Afghanistan. He's one of the most decorated war heroes alive today, having been awarded the conspicuous Gallantry Cross. He's now a specialist in the world of conservation. Please welcome to the stage, James Glancy. Give a round of applause for James Clancy. Hello, can you hear me out there? Yes. Do we believe in democracy? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. Do we believe in Great Britain? Yes. 
More importantly, do we believe that we can thrive and succeed outside the European Union? Yes! So do I. I love this country. I've served it for over 10 years and I was prepared to defend our values. Freedom of speech, the rule of law, democracy. Prepared to defend it with my life. And I served all around the world for this country. Some of the places I went to were some of the hell holes on earth where people do not have basic rights. Where their ruling classes disregard them and have no respect. They would give anything to live in a country like this. Coming back here, I never thought that we would have to stand up for our own rights, for our own democracy. It's unbelievable that we had a referendum which we thought would be clearly in or out and for that to be ignored by our own ruling classes. I never thought I would be standing here. Now, to be quite honest with you, it's not easy throwing your hat in the ring for politics. I'll, I'll, I'll square with you, it's actually the most frightening thing I've ever done. Worse than being in a war zone. Because <laughs> politics has become so, vicious, so horrendous. The abuse you get when you stand up for what you believe in. And I suppose there's been some defining moments for me. Over the last two years, I felt they can't, I can't say that I supported Brexit. I did it for very legitimate reasons, because I believe in parliamentary democracy. I believe that our politicians, when they're voted in, if we don't like what they're doing, five years later, we can get rid of them. It's a very simple system. You don't have that in the European Union, so for that reason, I voted for it. But I've been afraid to speak, because we have been told we're stupid, that we didn't know what we were voting for. Did you know what you were voting for? Yes! So did I. We're voting for democracy. And that's what standing for the Brexit party means. We're voting for uh, democracy. Let me tell you who didn't know what they were voting for. In 1991, the Maastricht Treaty, which took us into the European Union. Afterwards, John Major and his cronies said they hadn't actually read the full treaty. They didn't know what they were voting for. And they never asked the people. And that was the same with Tony Blair. Three treaties were signed taking us deeper into the European Union, taking away our democracy, taking away that transparency and accountability. The first opportunity we had to give them the message that we respect democracy and we want parliamentary democracy in the United Kingdom was in 2016. And what do we tell them? We told them we want to leave. And where are we today? We haven't. It's a complete disgrace. And that's why I felt compelled to stand up. So we've got an option down here in the Southwest. And I think if you look at the candidates we've got today, you'll realize how passionate they are about this country and how much they believe in democracy. On the other hand, there are other, other candidates standing down here. There's a party that doesn't want change, but it's called itself the Independent Change Group, but doesn't have a logo. We're not quite sure what it is. Who here knew that Boris Johnson had a sister? Well, I didn't. Well, if you vote for the Change Independent Whatever They Are group, that's who you're going to get, Rachel Johnson. Do you want to see her representing you? No! Well, there's another person, one of Tony Blair's cronies. He's been trying to undermine our country on taxpayers' mileage, flying private jets over to foreign countries, negotiating against us, betraying our country. Lord Andrew Adonis. Are you going to vote for him? No. Well, I think uh, my time's just about up, but what I'd say is, if you believe in democracy, if you believe this country has a bright future, then let's send them a message at Westminster. Vote for the Brexit party. Thank you. Brilliant, pop that there. James Clancy, ladies and gentlemen. A brave servant of our country and now bravely, courageously putting himself up. And he's so right. Do we believe in democracy? Yes! Do the Ramonas believe in democracy? No! Are you sure? Yes!
Excellent. We're on song still. Perfect. So for our second candidate, ladies and gentlemen, is another very brave lady. She, she's a she was a registered nurse. She's an award-winning charity worker, having previously worked for British Airways. And again, she probably never imagined in her wildest, most exotic, wonderful dreams that she would be standing for, to be an MEP candidate. But she also felt passionately that enough was enough. Please give a huge welcome to the stage, Christina Jordan. <laughs> for coming to listen to little old me <laughs> and all of these grandees here. They asked us to trust them with our votes at the referendum and at the general elections, and we trusted them. But Remain supporting MPs have done everything they can possibly think of to deny us our democratic right. I trained and worked as a registered nurse in the 80s, worked as cabin crew for nearly 10 years in the 90s, and helped raise funds for charities in later years. Three years ago, I, like so many others, distributed leaflets and helped with the Brexit effort and celebrated the well-deserved result. A couple of years ago, I took a step back from charity work to live my quiet life in the countryside. I have never had any political ambitions. So, when ordinary people like me get riled up enough to leave the safety of our anonymous lives, Parliament should take note. Yeah. Our democracy is precious to us. We will not allow them to go back on their word. We will not sit back and allow Remain supporting MPs who call Brexiteers Nazi appeasers and other derogatory names to go unchallenged. We will not keep quiet when they tell us we did not know what Brexit meant. And we will certainly not keep quiet when they call us racist. <laughs> now is about democracy and the message we send Parliament. If Parliament wants to send MEPs to Brussels, well, the Brexit party will oblige. I am sure the EU cannot wait for the Brexit party MEPs to arrive. <laughs> On the 23rd of May, let's not disappoint them. Vote for the Brexit party. Thank you. Isn't she great? We love Christina. So brave, so passionate, wonderful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to our next candidate, who may be known to some of you. She also is a very brave lady. And she's had a number of phases to her career. Her warm-up phase, just like a sort of pilot course, really, her warm-up phase was 23 years as a Conservative MP. But that really was just the beginning. Much greater things were to come because she realized that actually a career in TV was definitely her calling. <laughs> So she went straight in at the deep end with Strictly Come Dancing. Well, we all know the fantastic results. And then, of course, she moved on, not content with that, to Celebrity Big Brother. And she has also joined the Brexit Party to be a candidate. She was with us in Newport in South Wales last night. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, she is absolutely on fire. Before we welcome Anne to the stage, let's just see her on the video on the screen over there. 
We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anton Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party. And we've got the worst Parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. Now, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and Parliament. And what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. Now we've seen That's what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Anne Whittacombe. in the EU and control our own trade deals? No. Can we stay in the EU and make our own laws? No. Can we stay in the EU and control our own borders? No. And can we stay in the EU and be democratically ruled by our own elected government? No. Those four reasons are why people voted to leave in 2016. And the patronising nincompoops who say that we don't know why we voted to leave are completely wrong. Be because as long as the answers to those four questions are no, then there is no reason at all why any person who values and respects Britain should want to stay in the EU. We are being comprehensively let down by our politicians. We are being let down by a government which appears to have decided right at the start of these negotiations that we needed their gracious permission to leave. <laughs> we should simply have said to the EU right at the start, we are going. <laughs> and if Juncker can't understand that, Let's tell him in his own language, news are long. <laughs> and that is what we should have said at the beginning. And we should have said, we are leaving and because we are leaving, we are interested in negotiating a trade deal, but that is all we need to negotiate. We do not need to be told that we can leave. We voted to leave. We want to leave. We will leave. But it isn't only the government. It is also the Labour Party. Quite right. And we need to point out that if they had not frustrated Brexit, we could have left a long time ago. They promised in 2017 in their manifesto that they would implement the will of the British people. And ever since then, they have been trying to frustrate the will of the British people. And we need to send both major parties a real terrible, horrible, long-lasting shock in these elections. <laughs> we need to say to them that they have a choice. Either we leave or they leave. <laughs> The time has come for real change in British politics. The time has come to expect our politicians to stop patronising the people, 
to stop ignoring the people, to stop believing that they always know better than the people, and to listen to the people. And they don't want to do that, but we're going to make them do that on May the 23rd. And on May the 23rd, we will be sending them a very, very clear message. We were not worn down by Project Fear, and we won't be worn down by the sheer fatigue of their messing about. Of course, we're all frustrated. But the message that arises from that frustration is not that we will give up and give in, but that we will make them change course and do what we told them to do. They said they would do whatever we told them to do. Well, we made it very clear. It is still very clear. And if they are not doing what we want them to do, then on May the 23rd, we will begin the process of making them do what we told them to do. Thank you. Isn't she great? I promised you, ladies and gentlemen, that she was only just warming up. Her time is yet to come, believe me. She's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Anne. She believes so passionately in democracy. And you can see just how brave she is. Just like our next candidate, who also never imagined that she would be standing for election as an MEP. She's been a specialist in financial services for over 30 years. And you talk about bravery of putting your head above the parapet to get involved in politics. But she also was brave enough to donate one of her own kidneys to save the life of her husband. She is a truly brave woman. Please welcome to the stage, Anne Tarr. <clears throat> I have never made a political speech in my life and I might have to follow that. <laughs> I mean, it's just not fair, is it? How, what on earth can I say now? I never imagined I would ever make a political speech and I'm making one now because I am so angry. I am angry that the promises which were made to us were broken. I'm angry that leavers, people like you and me, have been called stupid and racist and that we did not know what we were doing. I knew what would happen if leave won. I knew it'd be difficult to leave the EU, that they would not want to make it easy. How did I know this? Well, David Cameron told us, didn't he? In his leaflet, which he sent to us all, he said the EU may not give us any deals. But I voted for it anyway. Why? Because I want to live in a country which can trade with who it wants to trade with. I want to do more business with Africa and help that country come out of poverty. to do business with South America. Look at Venezuela, they need help. Yes. And I want to do business with our friends in other parts of the world. I want to live in a country which can decide on its own rules. The political system in this country is broken. I am fed up with the political class ignoring what the majority want. Just because we don't live in London, just because we don't live in London doesn't mean that we should be ignored. 
We are the ones with a vision for our country. We are the ones with a vision for our children. We are the ones who want to do things differently. And for all of us, not just the few in Westminster. Let us change politics for good. Let us choose independence, choose freedom, and let us all choose the Brexit party. Thank you. What an brilliant. How brave is she? Thank you very much, Anne. Absolutely fantastic. And to our next candidate, ladies and gentlemen, someone who spent 32 years in the armed forces in the Navy. He served in the Falklands and in the Middle East. He's now a director of Veterans for Britain. Please welcome to the stage Rear Admiral Roger Lane Knott. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a great pleasure to see such a big crowd in God's own country. I have a long association with this region. I started at the Britannia Royal Naval College Dartmouth when I was a mere sprig of a 17 year old. I commanded submarines, nuclear submarines from the Devonport Naval Base, HMS Swiftshore and HMS Splendid and then HMS Coventry and the 1st Frigate Squadron. I know this region well, I've lived in Tor Point, and I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to be able to try and represent you in this particular challenge. So why are we fighting back? Why are we creating the Brexit Party? We know it's a complete failure of current party politics in UK. A shambles of delivering Brexit has been stark, nationally embarrassing and internationally damaging. So the, the Brexit party is not looking for a protest vote, although we may well get one, but opening up a huge opportunity to put people, and especially young people, first. Oh, South Ham's for Brexit. I thought you voted Remain. <laughs> oh, you voted Brexit. That's good. I look around and I see that I'm probably marginally older than most of you, although we're obviously most of us of a, of a generation the same. So we know what freedom is. We know what the importance of democracy is. I fought in three wars for freedom and many of you fought as well. Parliament failed to implement the referendum result we were promised and the, and the country has come to a standstill. Whether you were a Remainer or a Lever, you've been betrayed. And it's not a question, and we've heard this before, of left or right, but right or wrong. This region is steeped in the, in the armed forces and its history from Drake onwards. On defence so important to this region, she's, uh, Mrs May has allowed the UK to be signed up to the new European Defence Union without any parliamentary scrutiny at all. She's allowed us to be signed up to all these things. MPs don't deny it, don't know anything about it. The House of Commons Select Com Committee don't know anything about it. And, we, and I've been fighting for this for four years now. But the Brexit Party, to be more positive, is about changing politics for good. That's our logo. We are seeking major reform probably of both Houses of Parliament, the Civil Service, 
and a new order of how our democracy is delivered in this country. So if you're unhappy with the status quo like I am, whether you're a Remainer or a Lever, I don't mind. But like me and my colleagues here, who are very clear that we are, take a chance. Do something positive. Tell your friends and make a stand and vote for the Brexit party on the 23rd of May. And as, sub, as us submariners say, deep down, you know it makes sense. <laughs> Isn't he great? Aren't we lucky to have such experience, such knowledge, such courage as one of our candidates for the Southwest? Because we all so passionately believe in democracy and we have to restore trust in democracy. Do we, do we, what do we want ladies and gentlemen? Do we want Brexit? Yes. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. Keeping you warm ladies and gentlemen, keeping you warm. We haven't quite finished yet. Our next, our next candidate is also uh, a local person. She lives in Totnes. Not only is she a yoga teacher, but she is the living embodiment of our slogan changing politics for good because she is a specialist in change. Please welcome to the stage Nicola Dark. Well, isn't this exciting? I'm delighted to be here this evening. I grew up down here. I went to Kevix. I don't know if there are any others that did. Yes, wonderful. Okay, a few, great. Um, I now am a transformation coach. So I work with businesses to teach them how to innovate and change. And I work with people one-to-one -one on personal change. And I live and breathe change right throughout the spectrum from individual to organizational to systemic. And I never thought I would step into politics. I've, a few people have said that this evening. I don't really want to play the game as it's currently constructed. But it too needs to change. <laughs> And the thing about change is, it is totally dependent upon every individual accessing their personal agency, using their power, their voice, and their choice. That is democracy. But Westminster isn't listening. So, not only do we need to show them that democracy matters, but beyond that, and to quote Gandhi, we need to be the change we want to see. And that comes with two key points. One, that each and every one of us needs to take responsibility for our future. We're not outsourcing it to Brussels, any decisions and also to use your vote to show that democracy matters. And I know many are fed up and almost think, what's the point in voting? But if you are fed up, vote. <laughs> and secondly, we need to work together to do this. Conversations about leaving Europe and patriotism being labeled as nationalism and separatism is nonsense. Patriotism is driven by the desire to find belonging and to come together. And the Brexit party is full of both Remainers and Leavers. We are a diverse group. But we unite over what really matters. 
and that is the people. What Westminster has forgotten, our democracy, the human element. And so we must come together to collectively shepherd each other forward into a new space. And our diversity as a party is brilliant because that is how we get better at having the debate that is so desperately needed. It is through diversity that we get creative in coming up with new ways. So the system, sadly, no longer serves us. It's lost its way. Then what use is it? So use your power because together we can change politics for good. Isn't she great? Thank you, Nicola. Fantastic. Another brave candidate prepared to put her head above the parapet in order to help change politics for good. To my next speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Not a candidate in this region, but I think is probably known to you a little bit. <coughs> he needs little introduction, but it's fair to say that there is probably no one who has had a greater influence on British politics in the last 70 years. You talk about courage, he's faced, as he's tried to change our country for the last 25 years and get us out of the European Union, he's faced hideous personal and family abuse. But he's put up with it because he knew that what he stood for was right for this country. And like all of us, he trusted the MPs when they voted to serve Article 50. But like all of us, he feels massively let down. And the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, he's just warming up. He really is. You know, you think you've seen something, I promise you, he is just warming up. So before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of him in action on the video. Oh, I'll be leading the Brexit party into those European elections, as it now looks certain they will happen. Anybody that has ever been in business knows that when you sit down for a negotiation, both sides are prepared to walk away unless terms can be agreed. Westminster used to be known as the mother of parliaments, and here we are behaving, frankly, like a banana republic, ignoring the views of the people. People weren't agreed on what leave right. meant. Right, simple. Leave, there was full no stop. manifesto. Leave, leave. full stop. But there is Leaving no leave. the single market. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. Hello, News and Abbott. It's great to see you all here, but you know something? We shouldn't really need to be here, should we? With the sun shining, I'm reminded of that morning on the 24th of June, 2016, that great morning. And if you thought about what had gone on for the previous few weeks, we'd had the giant multinationals telling us if we voted Brexit, they'd leave the country, the factories would all close. We had the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, telling us there'd be an emergency budget, taxes would go up, interest rates would go up, and half a million people would lose their jobs immediately. We had the President of the United States of America, Obama, coming and telling his greatest ally in the world that if we dared, to become an independent, self-governing, democratic nation, we'd go to the back of the queue. I think I remember being told that plagues of black locusts <laughs> would descend upon our land, and despite all of it, oh, and despite that leaflet, David Cameron, remember him? 
David Cameron sent that leaflet through every door in this home, didn't he? Spending nearly 10 million pounds of our money. And it told us that if we voted to leave, it would mean leaving the single market. It told us that if we voted to leave, they would implement the result. And I have to say, on that morning, in pretty full celebratory mood, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, no one's perfect. And I really thought we'd done it. And then the next year, there was a general election and both the Labour and the Conservative parties promised, vote for us, we will honour the result and we will implement Brexit. And I kind of believed them. And then four... 198 members of parliament voted for article 50 and article 50 said we would leave the european union at 11 p.m on the 29th of march 2019 with or without a deal and i thought we'd won i really thought we'd won and here we are and we haven't left on march the 29th we haven't as the next promise was left on the 12th of April or the 30th of June, now we're told we'll leave on the 31st of October. Halloween. <laughs> Trick or treaty. And the truth of it is, there has been a willful betrayal of the trust of voters in this country. It has been done by both of our mainstream parties. Theresa May wanted us to leave one European Union treaty to join another European Union treaty in a deal that I think we can describe as the worst deal in history. What a disgrace. In fact, it's such a bad treaty it's almost worse than being a member of the European Union. <laughs> and in doing so, she's bowed down to virtually every demand made by Michel Barnier. Everything she's been asked by Jean-Claude Juncker. She has reduced us to a laughing stock. She has humiliated this nation in the eyes of the world, and that, from a leader, simply isn't good enough. But they genuinely thought and believed that in doing this, in watering it down, in delaying it, in betraying our vote, they genuinely thought that they could get away with it. They genuinely thought that we would not stand up and fight back. Well, I did not spend 25 years of my life often thinking at times that I might in the end become the patron saint of lost causes. <laughs> well, it wasn't easy for many of those years. I didn't spend 25 years of my life, I thought to myself, just before Christmas, to be rolled over by these people, to allow the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation to be overturned. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I formed the Brexit party, because I want to fight back. And I'm pleased to say, that our wonderful team here in the South West that you've just heard from, they want to fight back. Yeah. And unless I'm misunderstanding the mood of this crowd, I sense that you want to fight back. Yeah. And we can make a start on that process here on the 23rd of May. Now, you've got a lot of choice in this election. You can, if you wish to, vote for the Conservatives. 
I'm not quite sure what their message is. I don't really even know the names of any of their candidates, but never mind. You could vote for them. You could equally vote for Vince Cable's Liberal Democrats, who do not respect the result of the referendum and are seeing their poll ratings flatlining. But there is a new party out there that you might wish to consider voting for, headed up by a very exciting group of people, all of whom live in Kensington and Chelsea. And they've got the most fantastic name. It's a very exciting name. They're called Change UK. How about that? And they think they're good at politics. Their logo looks like a Sainsbury's barcode. <laughs> and they don't want to change a blooming thing. In fact, they want us to stay in the European Union. But if you want to vote for the charms of Rachel Johnson here in the West Country, you can opt to do so, though I think very few people will. But so much of the talk around Brexit is about divisions that exist within the Conservative Party. It's about the appallingness of Mrs May's treaty. And what Jeremy Corbyn has done is to sit on the fence. This policy of constructive ambiguity so that Remainers in London think he's on their side and Leavers here in Devon think he's on their side. And I was down in, I was down in Plymouth earlier on today, you know, talking to people who in the past have wanted to vote Labour. But here is the truth of it. Look at the Labour candidates and see what their policies are. And indeed, here in the South West, you've got Lord Andrew Adonis. <laughs> but he, no, don't boo, he's useful. Oh, absolutely. No, come on. I mean, I, I, I did invite him tonight and I'm very sorry <laughs> that he wouldn't come and I'm travelling the whole country in the next three weeks and I'd love him to be on every single platform I'm on because he said a few months ago, if you're a Brexiteer, don't vote Labour. And he's right, isn't he? Yeah. So there are the choices before you or there is another choice. It's a brand new political party. It's called the Brexit Party. And here they are. <laughs> and I'm going to name them. I'm going to name them Widdicombe's Wonders. <laughs> Seemed all right to me. <laughs> and that's who you've got to vote for. But. But, and it was said from this stage already, yes, we're angry and we're right to be angry. In fact, I don't think there's ever been a bigger disconnect in this country in our history between the people and the politicians in Westminster. But just having anger on its own is not enough. We have to have optimism. We have to give people hope. We have to have belief in our hearts that something can be done to change this situation. I want us to go out on May the 23rd here in the South West across the United Kingdom to come first to win this election, but not to do it for its own sake, to do it actually for something far more fundamental. This isn't just about Brexit. This isn't just about whether we leave the European Union. This is about whether we are a democratic, properly run country. That is what this is about. <laughs> it is about our standing in the world. Can you imagine if in some African country there'd been an election and the result had been overturned. I mean, the lot at Change UK would all be having a fit of the vapours, wouldn't they? <laughs> They'd be demanding the United Nations was, was, was sent in. Think about it. This is happening in one of the oldest functioning democracies in the world. This is happening 
in what we used to call the mother of parliaments. And it's happening above all because we have a two-party system that is broken. It is no longer fit for purpose. So let us use let us use these elections to begin a great crusade. Yes, a crusade to get back our independence, but a crusade to put people in politics who will actually respect the will of the voters. It, it, this has to happen, and it's all gone the wrong way round. The fact is that we, the people, are the ones that have sovereignty. We are the masters and they are the servants and they have forgotten that and on May the 23rd let's make them remember that <laughs> and we will then we will then take this great crusade on and I have some news tonight which is that in Peterborough well, you may remember the Member of Parliament having been to prison, refused to resign and indeed wearing her tag was voting on Brexit in the House of Commons. Well, under the new legislation, there needed to be 7,000 votes in Peterborough amongst the electorate to trigger a by-election. And I can tell you, within the space of the last hour, 19,000 people in Peterborough. And I can also tell you now, unequivocally, from this stage, for the first time, that we, in the Brexit party, on June the 6th, when that by-election is fought, we will fight that by-election. This is just the beginning of an attempt to fundamentally reset, realign and change British politics. It is rotten, it is dishonest, it is broken, it doesn't work and we can do so much better because we believe in our country, we believe in our people, we believe in democracy, we believe in the legacy that was handed down to us from generations who made massive sacrifices so that we could be free people. If they thought we were gonna give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit party and the Brexit party needs you. Thank you. Not a bit. Didn't I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, didn't I tell you? He is just warming up. And we can change politics for good. And yes, politics is a serious business but we can have a bit of fun as well on the side. And we've got a few questions here. And as always, there's always someone who wants to have a bit of fun. And the first question, Nigel loves this. I was hoping someone would say, what's your favorite cider? But no, the question is, what's his favorite beer, Nigel? Oh, well, I have to say, I quite like, it's a Dorset beer, it's called Badger, and I love it, but, <laughs> but, all the jokes and all the cartoons, I mean, you'd think I'd spend the whole day in the pub with Jean-Claude Juncker, wouldn't you? <laughs> the actual truth of it is, I've lost quite a bit of weight, <laughs> and I'm actually on a get fit regime because I said to my family at Christmas, I realized this betrayal was coming. It's why I'd set up this party, and I said, I have not yet fought my biggest political battle by far and I'm actually for the first time ever in my adult life trying to get myself fit because I don't just want to take on the establishment, I want to rout them! Yeah. 
You're a very proper lot. There, was, there wasn't a question, which we have had before. Nigel, will you marry me? <laughs> um, but, but, but Fran from Taunton did ask, what will the party do if the European elections are cancelled? Nigel, what? Well, there is this idea that the European elections could be cancelled. There is only one way in which they could be cancelled, and that is if Mrs May does an absolutely treacherous deal with Jeremy Corbyn that would lock us into a permanent customs union and keep us part of the single market. Um, if that happened, I suspect support for the Brexit party would explode even more rapidly and even more quickly. But it isn't going to happen. She knows she can't get it through Westminster. And, and you know, Anne on the video earlier said that she thought this was the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. And without wishing to begin any splits within this party in its infancy, Anne's wrong. She's the worst Prime Minister in the history of our country. The next question is a question for Anne. It's from Jeremy from Somerset. What happens if at the end of this extension period to Trick or Treat Day, what happens if no deal has been made and the Prime Minister revokes Article 50? The Brexit Party wins the next general election. As you can see, there's no waffle with Widdicombe, is there? <laughs> Short, simple, sharp and absolutely clear. Um, Julie, I've got to try and keep it straight. Julie from Dartmoor. Julie from Dartmoor, are you here? There she is. Julie from Dartmoor. What happens after the European elections if we win? I think I answered that really. What happens after the European elections is we set up camp in Peterborough and we take on the political class in that by-election and we will give it our best shot. I can't make any promises, but I think if we do win these European elections, something called momentum, no, not Corbyn's lot, but, <laughs> but something called momentum kicks in, and when you've got the big M going with you, almost anything is possible. Peterborough is the answer to your question, and we intend to fight it, to try and win it. We've got another question for Anne here. Uh, this is from Alison from Bovey. And are we in danger of taking votes? Uh, if we're in danger of taking votes away from the Tories, does that mean we end up with a Corbyn government? No, you do not end up with a Corbyn government by voting for the Brexit party uh, on the 23rd for the very simple reason that up in the Labour heartlands, they will also be voting for the Brexit party and the message will go out across the nation that we expect both major parties to honour the commitments that they made. So please don't worry about, am I taking a vote from this party or am I taking a vote from that party? What matters is you vote for the Brexit party to send the message. I've got all the W's. I'm now going to call her wonderful winners. Our final question, and this is really important actually, because this is what enables us to win. Nigel, it's from John from Exeter. What's the strategy to bring more Labour voters over to the Brexit party? No, and I think that's, the, in many ways, if you look at the first few weeks of this campaign, the UKIP vote has all but disappeared. Um, and that's not just because I've left them, it's because they've, um, shall we say, there have been one or two self-inflicted errors in that party. Uh, we're doing very well with the Conservative vote, which appears to be collapsing in parts of the country, and I sense in parts of Devon the Conservative vote is genuinely collapsing. The real challenge now, the real challenge for me now, is to make sure people in those Labour heartlands people in those big Midlands, northern cities, South Wales, people who've generally voted Labour but also voted Brexit, that they understand 
that the Labour Party's betrayal on this is in some ways even worse than the Conservative Party's betrayal on this. And if we can get that message out, as Anne says, there's every prospect that we can really terrify them. Do you know, if you look at Labour seats, you know, over 60% of Labour seats in England and Wales voted leave. But the key thing is this, of the 45 marginals that Labour have to win in England and Wales to form a majority, 40 of them are Brexit voting constituencies. So if I can get this message out, we can scare Labour every much as bit as we can scare the Conservative parties. And there is a chance, I suppose, that in the wake of a big victory in this election and Peterborough, there's a chance that our politicians in Westminster all come to their senses. There's a chance they might say, do you know what? We need to be honourable. <laughs> <laughs> and pigs might fly. <laughs> so the answer is, the answer is, we have to not just frighten them in Westminster, we have to start winning seats from them. There is no other way of doing this. Do you know something? Even if, even if they forced a second referendum upon us and we won by an even bigger margin, which we would, this current parliament would still not enact it. That is why the change that is needed here. We need to change politics for good. We need to sweep away many of those politicians who have betrayed our will and, and done down the great democratic tradition of our wonderful country. Thank you. That brings us to the end, ladies and gentlemen, but you have clearly heard that to govern this country requires leadership. It requires confidence. It requires belief. Do we believe in Britain? Yes! What do we want? Brexit! Let's have all your hands up, all your boards up. What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! now! Have a very safe trip home. Thank you very much for coming.